Hello, welcome to the second video on control charts for variables. So in the first video, I had explained to you conceptually what control charts are and told you that we're going to talk about how to make control charts for uh, variables in this video. And the next video will tell you how to make control charts for attributes. But before we go ahead uh, and actually make control charts, let's kind of make a review of what we did in the previous uh, session. So we said variables are anything that can be measured. They need a scale. Uh, length, width, thickness, anything like that, which can be variables. And the process for creating these charts is very simple. We have multiple samples or uh, multiple batches and each batch has many items. So we take the sample means first uh, of the um, whatever the uh, variable that we want to control. And after taking the sample means, we take the grand mean. And uh, once we have the grand mean, uh, we look into a table, do some magic, calculate the upper control limits, lower control limits, and uh, then plot our values and check if our process is in control. That's as simple as that. So uh, remember these steps. We will use some actual values and an Excel spreadsheet that I have to see how this magic actually works. So imagine these are weights in grams. And uh, I have uh, 30 samples here. And uh, each of these samples has 10 items. Um, so for example, uh, let's say in sample number three, item number three has 10.89 grams. Uh, sample number th three, item number six has 8.96 grams and so on. So these are weights um, given. So let's go there. And as per our steps, the first thing that we do is find the sample mean, right? So let's go. So I'll write sample mean and calculate it equal to the Excel formula is average and select all these, da -da, enter. And after I select this, I go here and go to this corner and double click, which gives me all these uh, values sample mean for everything. There's a green something which talks about the error because I did not consider the first row. It won't make a difference to the calculations, but let's remove it. And I say ignore error. There it goes. These are sample means. I also need a um, range for each sample. I'll tell you in a bit why we need that, but let's calculate it here. We need the range and I say range is the maximum value minus the minimum value. So it's max of the sample. Uh, minus min of this sample and enter and same thing I do again I go here double click take a plus sign so it gives me all the values there are all these green things again there's the same error because I did not consider the column A and I say ignore error and uh, there we are so we have the sample means in the range and then we say I told you we need to find the grand means so X bar bar as it's called because X bar stands for mean and the mean of means is X bar bar equal to average of all these numbers here. Um, closed, enter, and I can actually copy this formula here and give me the average of all these numbers, right? So, so what I have is I have the sample mean average, which is the grand mean for samples. And this is the grand or this is the mean for uh, range, right? So that's what we have um, here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to somehow calculate. Uh, now, let's see how to create the magic that we talked about. So to have some magic, we go to Google and uh, Google here. Let me go back. I just Googled for SQC, X bar chart and table. You can Google for anything like that. And I just clicked on the first uh, result that I got. Um, you may get a different result, but it'll still come to the same answer. Don't worry. And it has some formulas of how to work on it. Um, so if I look at the X bar chart, which is uh, what this gives me, it says the upper control limit for the X bar chart is X bar bar, which we the grand mean that we calculated, plus something called as A2 times R bar. And the lower control limit is X bar bar minus A2 times R bar. So we have R bar and we have X bar bar. We just don't have A2. Let's scroll down. Here is A2. 
So uh, uh, I, my subgroup size in this case is 10 because I have 10 items in each sample and my corresponding A2 is 0 0.308. So I'll remember this number. It's 0 0.308. I go back to my Excel sheet and use the formulas that I have uh, to create the upper control limit and lower control limit for X bar chart. I could write here UCL for upper control limit, LCL for, and this is for the X bar chart. I have this habit of creating, writing everything or creating tables on Excel, which I think is a good habit, which is equal to X bar bar plus A2, which was 0. 308 times R bar, which is this number here, right? And this is my upper control limit and my lower control limit is X bar bar, which is this number minus A2, which is 0 0.308 times, so A2 is 308 because my item numbers or number of items in each sample is 10. If that changes, the A2 will change uh, as per the charts times the R bar done. I have the upper control limits and the lower control limits for my X bar chart. Now to make the charts and check if everything is under control, I go here. I will first uh, plot my X bar bar, which is the grand mean X bar bar, which is equal to this number that I just calculated here. Um, 10 point, um, if you say this number here, 10 point this number. Right, enter, so I get that number um, here. And then I'll write my UCL, and then I'll write my LCL, upper control limit for UCL for X bar chart, and LCL also for X bar chart. All right, so I'll write this is equal to scroll down, the X bar upper control limit is 11 and the lower control limit is 9. Enter. So I have these three values here. So uh, I will fix these cells so that I can drag them down. Uh, again, uh, if you don't know how to fix it, uh, any Excel uh, basic course uh, should know it. Uh, I should tell you about it. So again, I'm not going to work on fixing and how to fix in this particular uh, video. So, but anyways, once I'm fixed it, I take this double click and I get these values. And so the next step, you see it's just a repetition, but fine. So the next step is creating my control charts. I select these three columns till the end. And after having selected them, I press, I scroll up again, press the control key and select this particular column take care to select only this column and just we don't select the X bar bar value. And then I go to insert and I will insert the line chart. I'm just going to insert the basic line chart. And uh, yeah, so it should give me the uh, control chart somewhere. Yeah, here I have my control chart. And um, because it's a bit problematic, I'm not using this uh, part. So let me uh, change the axis. I say format axis and the minimum value is eight. I'm assuming there's nothing below eight, so I take eight, enter. So yeah, now this is a much better control chart that I have here. Uh, I'll close this particular format shape. I don't need that. So if you look at it, all these samples are under control except this particular sample number six. There are some special cause present here, which I can go back and investigate. Other than that, everything has been more or less under control. Um, as far as X bar chart, let me change the title and so that I can call it um, X bar chart. Yes, so that's the X bar chart. So that's the how we make um, the X bar chart. Now, what happens here is, think of this. I could have wide variation within a sample and the average is under control just because the variation is equal on both sides of the grand mean, right? And that's not a good process because it has wide variations internally. So we need to, we need a chart which checks if the variation internally is under control. And a good and simple way to check the, whether the variation internally is under control, internally within each sample is under control. 
we have something which is called a R chart. That's the second chart we are going to make here. And that's what I said. We So whenever we make uh, control charts for um, variables, we always will have two charts, remember. First is the control uh, X bar chart. Come on, you can move. And second is the R chart because R chart will tell us about the variation uh, within the sample. All right, I moved it away. So for R chart, I go back to my um, table here and see that uh, the formula upper control limit is D4 times R bar, if you look here, and uh, the lower control limit, if you look here, is D3 times R bar. I use that, capital D4 and capital D3, and those values are right here um, that we can use. Uh, there's, there's a simple way to calculate them, but again, that's beyond uh, this video. Uh, my unit size is 10, and if I go here, my lower control limit is 0.223, and upper control limit is 1.777. I'm going to use these values. Uh, go back to my Excel sheet, um, and where our calculations were, I have this is my range. So I have the R chart. My upper control limit is, uh, if I see, I go back to the Excel, it's 1.777 is 1.777 times R bar, which is 3.21. Enter, lower control limit is um, 0 0.223, 0 0.223 times R bar. I get these two values and I'm going to follow the exact same procedure that I followed earlier. I call it R values um, or I call it R bar value here, which is equal to this value. Enter. I have UCL R chart and I have LCL R chart. Again, this is exact same procedure of what I did earlier for X bar chart. So the R is this, this is the upper control limit and the lower control limit. Once I enter these values, I can again go and uh, fix them here. Uh, dollar sign for fixing this. Dollar sign for fixing this. dollar sign for fixing this. All right. So once I fix all three, I drag them. I double take the plus sign, double click. So if you see now, I have the values till the base. Wonderful. And now I can use this same thing. I select these three columns completely. And then I go, um, you can see that I've selected till the end. And then I go to the R range. I press control key and then select range. And I again scroll down till the bottom. Uh, once I've selected this, insert line chart, uh, which is I select the simplest of line charts. And if I scroll up, this is what I have is my R chart. And let's rename it. All right, so if you see here, uh, if I see these two charts that I've made, um, R chart is primarily in control, right? So, so within each sample, within each sample, there's not too high a variation that's under control. So we are fine. But uh, what we find here is sample six is problematic. So again, once we create the control limits, we can keep using it in our process so long as all the uh, uh, everything associated with the process is held constant, right? So this was a quick introduction of how to create X bar and R bar, uh, X bar and R chart for variables. Um, thanks for um, sticking with me for this video. And I'm hoping to see you in the next video, which is control charts for uh, attributes. Thank you.